My name is the Reverend Joe Evans, and on behalf of First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, I welcome you here for the special time of prayer. Prayer can center us during this difficult and challenging time for wherever we are and whatever our circumstance. Our God is listening. Happy Easter. This is a season where we as a church come together and celebrate. This afternoon we are in Psalm 118. Our psalmist talks about serving a God of long odds and how no matter how dark or how bleak things seem, our God is bigger than that. We know that because we are in a season of celebrating the resurrection of the crucified king. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are a God of long odds, that you are a God of long stories. Help us, Lord, to look around and find things to celebrate. Help us, Lord, to be people who look for hope and choose hope. Help us, Lord, to be people who continue to put one foot in front of the other, knowing that your imagination is bigger than ours. Help us to be people who celebrate. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 118, a song of victory. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look and triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mere mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me, and in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side, and in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees, they blazed like a fire of thorns, and in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. I thank you that you answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festival procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Hello, my name is Jim Ray. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian Church. How are you giving thanks to God today? 
Well, first of all, I have much to be thankful for. I have thanks for safety and security of our home. Gene's done a marvelous job of making a home in normal times. And now that I'm here all the time, she's working extra hard to make sure that the refrigerator is full of food, the supplies are replenished, and the pantry is full as well. When I restarted my CPA firm, I started in my basement, and it was centered around being a virtual office. All 10 of my employees work from home from time to time, or most of the time, and there are only two of us that go into the office on a regular basis. Now that we're homebound, I'm very thankful that I have the resources and technology to do the same job at home that I did at the office. I'm also thankful for good health. I know that many are suffering during these, this time of coronavirus and many are dying. My heart goes out to the families of those who have lost loved ones. What marvelous thing is God doing in your life today? Sometimes it's the very small things that can really make a difference. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the Treasury Department announced that they were changing the due date for the individual tax filings from April 15 to July 15, including the date the payments need to be made. That was very good news for us. People who were in the uh, uh, CPA business that prepare tax returns, um, we have a very, very busy late winter, early spring, and extending the due date makes all the difference in the world. It gives me a lot more time. I do know that God is still in control, and in Romans 8.28, he promises that for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, all things, are, all things work together for good. Now, we can't see much but misery and suffering, and the prospects of a damaged economy loom ahead of us. But years from now, we'll look back and we'll be able to see God's hand at work. I'm Denise Slobodinsky, a member of Marietta First Presbyterian Church. How are you giving thanks to God today? When I read verse 1 of Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I look at my life right now. During this pandemic, I'm working from home. I live by myself. And I'm dealing with an elderly mother whose health is declining and she is thousands of miles away from me. Yet, I look at my life and I am blessed. I'm called to give thanks. Not because that's what the world says, but that's what God says. God says, be thankful. One of the ways that I try to give thanks to God is to use my talents. I'd love to write. So a couple years ago, I started writing on Facebook a word from my heart or words from my heart. When I started to do that, it was important to me to just share what I was dealing with because I thought I could encourage others. In March, when the pandemic started, I realized that a word or words from my heart might encourage others. And it was a way I could give thanks to God because the words I used were faith, hope, love, peace, grace. In this time, that's how I can thank God. I am so thankful to God, and I hope that he will know that I love him and I appreciate God's love now and always.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we bow our heads before you, praying that you would be present to us in this current time. When we are in isolation, be present. In our trouble, O Lord, hold us close. In our time of trial, see us through. Walk beside us, should we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We know, O oh Lord, that you are the great I am. You are the ancient of days. And we know, O oh Lord, that you are stronger than any trial. That you are eternal and can see before and after any moment of difficulty. So be present to us, Lord, and give us, give us hope, give us power, give us endurance, give us joy. Open our eyes to flowers that bloom, to sunrise, to sunset. Open our ears, O oh Lord, to the voices of those who we love. Give us courage enough to reach out and to break the silence. With our words and our actions, may your gospel be proclaimed. All these things and more. We pray them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This has been a ministry of First Presbyterian Church of Marietta, Georgia. Join us as together we change lives with faith, hope, and love. For more information, go to fpcmarietta.org. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Know that underneath this video, I am sitting on a box on top of my chair because I was not tall enough to get the shot, and that should be celebrated because that's funny. <laughs>